Hello, in this video we're going to solve some payroll tax problems to see how it affects equilibrium wages and employment. So first we're going to solve for labor market equilibrium when there are no taxes. So labor demand is given by 50 minus W, the wage, and the labor supply is given by the following equation. Equilibrium occurs in the labor market where the quantity demanded of labor, firms demand labor, where the quantity demanded of labor equals the quantity supplied. So we're going to just set both of these equations equal to one another and then solve for W. So adding 10 to both sides, we get 60, and then adding W to both sides, we get the following. Dividing through by 1.5, the equilibrium wage is $40. To get the equilibrium level of employment, plug $40 back into the, either the demand or supply equation. So at a wage of $40, firms will want to hire 10 workers, 50 minus the wage, 50 minus 40 is 10. And at $40, the number of people willing to work is going to be 10. Just looking at the labor supply equation and plugging 40 into it, we get minus 10 plus 20. So equilibrium wage of 40, equilibrium level of employment equals 10. Now let's see what happens when we put a payroll tax in this market. So example one, first thing we're going to recognize is that with a tax, a payroll tax, the wage paid by firms, W subscript F, will not equal the wage of workers. There is going to be a wedge between what firms pay and what workers receive once we take into account the payroll taxes. So in this example, we're going to assume firms are required to pay a payroll tax of $6 per worker. So from the firm's perspective, when we take into account taxes, <clears throat> the firm will be paying a wage bill of W subscript W, the wage workers, plus writing a check to the government for $6. So this will be the after-tax cost of labor to the firm. What firms pay workers plus what they pay the government in the tax. So what, we're not, what I'm going to do then is take this wage of workers plus $6 and I'm going to plug it into the labor demand equation. So where I have W subscript F, what is that? When we have taxes, it's the wage of workers plus the tax. And then simplify. So we got minus 6 and 50 is 44, and just minus the wage of workers. Now all we're going to do is set this equal to the labor supply equation. And we'll have one equation and one unknown. Adding 10 to both sides, and adding the wage of workers to both sides, and dividing through by 1.5, the wages, the wages of workers will be $36. And for the firm, the firm will pay workers $36, but then the firm has to pay the government $6 for each worker hired. So on an after-tax basis, the firm is now paying $42 for labor. So just rewriting those last results. And let's get the equilibrium level of employment so we can evaluate the labor demand equation at $42. And we see the firm is willing to hire eight workers. And we can evaluate the labor supply equation at the wages of workers of $36. And likewise, workers will supply eight units of labor. Without the tax, the wage was $40. With the tax, workers get $36. So workers are actually paying $4 of this $6 tax. Firms are paying $42. <clears throat> and before the tax, firms were only paying $40 for labor. So firms are paying $2 of the $6 tax. So firms are able to pass two-thirds of the tax on to workers in the form of lower wages. So even though we see a firm writing a $6 check to the government, not all of that $6 is coming from the firm's pocket. $4 of it is coming from the worker's pocket in the form of lower wages. All right, let's go to example two. So with a tax, we know there is a difference between 
what firms are paying for workers and workers are receiving. And in this example, we're going to have firms and workers split this $6 payroll tax. So $3 is going to be paid by firms and $3 is to be paid by workers according to the law. <clears throat> so in this case, from the firm's perspective, they're going to pay workers some wage W and then they have to pay the government $3. And from the worker's perspective, they get this W from the firms, and then they have to spend $3 in taxes, pay $3 to the government, so we have to subtract a tax there. So we get the after-tax wage bill for workers is the wage minus 3. So for labor demand, where I have W subscript F, I am now putting in W plus 3, which simplifies to the following. And for labor supply, where I have the wages of workers, that's going to be the wage minus the $3 that the workers sent to the government. So this would be the after-tax wage. Simplifying that equation, okay, 0.5 times minus 3 is minus 1.5, minus 1.5 added to minus 10, we get minus 11.5. Setting labor demand equal to labor supply and solving. The wage here is $39, but we're not done yet. We're interested to see what happens on an after-tax basis. So for firms, firms do pay workers $39, but then the firm has to write a check to the government for $3. So the after-tax wage bill is $42. Just like in our last example, when firms were actually 100% responsible for writing and submitting the check. And if, as far as workers are concerned, they do receive $39 from the firm, but they're not done. They have to send $3 of that, $39 to the government. They have to pay taxes on that. And notice we get the same exact outcome as before. And this leads us to the profound conclusion that the tax burden is independent of the tax law, that's the statutory incidence. All right, uh, final example, payroll tax three. Same labor demand, labor supply equations, but this time we're going to place the tax burden. Going to tr the government at least is going to try to place the tax burden completely on workers, so workers are 100% responsible for the tax. But as we saw in the last two examples, just because you place a tax somewhere doesn't mean it stays there. So... From the workers' perspective, firms are going to, from the workers' perspective, firms are going to pay them a wage of W subscript F, but then the workers have to submit a six dollar check to the government. So making our substitution into the labor supply equation of this W subscript F minus six and simplifying, and then setting labor demand equal to labor supply, collecting some terms here. Firms are going to pay $42. We saw that in the first two examples, so nothing has changed here. Yes, we changed the, the, the statutory incidence, but it didn't change the economics of what's happening, how this payroll tax is ultimately split between firms and workers. And as far as workers are concerned, they get this $42 from the firm, but they're not done. They have to write the check to the government for $6, leaving workers on an after-tax basis with $36. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.